one. I just made you all movie stars. You're very, very welcome, okay? <laughs> welcome to another virtual program with the amazing African American Chamber of Commerce of Greater Cincinnati and Northern Kentucky. It is truly a pleasure of mine to host another amazing program with the phenomenal Gail Brock of Brock, Communi uh, Brock Consulting, excuse me, please don't beat me up, uh, for messing up the name. Gail Brock was <laughs> presenting the first week um, of my uh, time at the African American Chamber of Commerce, and I got to spend a little bit of time inside of her session before being pulled away to do tons of paperwork, of course. You all know how it is when you're getting onboarded on a new position, but I thought it was so incredible. Um, the course was business etiquette, and I mean, she had heavy hitters in the room and they were taking serious notes. So that's how you know when a, a true presenter is dropping gems, right? When you have everyone in the room trying to make sure that they get all these takeaways. So uh, I was super excited to host her last month uh, for an, another amazing session. It was about from dreams to actions. Okay, so if you're struggling with that dream and trying to bring it to life, she talked about a great recipe to get you up in running and in motion with action and inspiration. Um, she also has homework on there. So if you watch it, you have to do that homework, okay? Please be sure, all right? Because Gail Brock is going nowhere with the African American Chamber. We always see her when we're in the physical space because she rotates on our lobby imagery. You've probably seen her featured, of course, on our programming information, but also in some of our um, testimonial work that we've done uh, with the African American Chamber and great things that are happening. So please, please, please get your pens, your pads ready. Yes. I yes. give you the amazing Gail Brock, Executive Consultant of Brock Consulting for Effective Personal communication. Thank you, Gail, for being here. <laughs> bonjour, bonjour tout le monde, tout le monde. Oh, premier, premier. Écoutez, bien, bien. J'aimerais à demander un bénévole, lever la main pour recevoir le cadeau de consultation personnelle gratuite. Maintenant, uh, répétez. J'aimerais à demander un bénévole, lève la main pour recevoir la cadeau d'une consultation personnelle gratuite. Comprenez-vous? Non, ne comprends pas. Non, personne lève la main. Oh, D'accord. Une autre, une autre façon. J'aimerais à demander à bénévole, lève la main pour recevoir le cadeau d'une consultation personnelle gratuite. D'accord? Tout le monde ne comprend pas? Oh, je suis de l'air. Je vais parler anglais pour vous. Je vais parler anglais. Est-ce est mieux? Ah, I, I, I sincerely apologize, everyone. I, I thought I was communicating effectively, but do you understand now? Can everyone see now? Is this better? I see Michael raising his, okay, very good. Thank you, Michael. Um, and you know what, I, again, I apologize because I thought I was communicating effectively. People were smiling, but I guess you were not understanding as my colleagues what I was trying to communicate. And so one question that we're gonna talk about today, are you communicating effectively with, with everyone that you are meeting, with your colleagues, with your, family members, with your staff. So let's jump into it. Are we, are, is everybody on the same page? Can you hear me okay? Very good, thank you. So here's what we're going to do today, everyone. The objectives are, we're gonna identify what behaviors reflect each different style of communication because there are different styles of communication. We're going to look at your personal communication style and we're gonna look at ways that we can improve ourselves. And that's why uh, Jordan you know, told you to please make sure that you take out a paper and pen so that, you can, so that we can do some things together. Also, I want you to make sure that we understand how you can assess other people's communication style, the way that you observe people's behaviors, and then we're gonna learn strategies for how to adapt our style to communicate more effectively. I was speaking French and I thought we were all good, and, um, but I had to adapt my style 
because people were looking at me like, what is she talking about? And so that's what we're going to learn. You good there, Eddie? Give me an okay sign. All right, very good. So now, so verbal communication is naturally the most prevalent style of communication that, that we use. And, and so why is verbal communication important? Okay, it's important because we engage in verbal exchanges more frequently than any other style of communication. You know, I know that's a big duh, but there, as you know, there are many different styles of communication. And one of our issues with verbal communication is that we generally think less about the impact of how or what we say sometimes before we start talking. Sometimes we just start talking and then boom, out it comes before we actually have thought about how is this going to resonate, resonate as it comes out of my mouth. So now let's go ahead and jump into it. For, with verbal communication, there are different elements of communication, and I'm going to be talking about these three elements uh, throughout our presentation today. And, um, and so the first element is visual. Yeah, visual is part of verbal communication. And when we talk about visual, um, the element of communication, we're talking about what is it that you are seeing? What are the gestures that people are making? When and you know, what kind of presentation is somebody making of themselves? That's your presentation speaks a lot about who you are and what you're trying to communicate. What is your posture? What's the eye contact that you're making? You know, in regards to and, and your general presence. So that's the visual part of communication. Now the next V in the three V's of, ele of elements is your t a voice, it's tone, the variety, your, the pitch, your voice control, your speech patterns, and the volume that also helps give a person an understanding of who you are and what you are trying to communicate. Finally, of course, there's the verbal uh, element of communication when we talk about the V's, the formality of your speech, the, the expression, how you express your opinions. So those are the three V elements. Everybody have that written down? The three V elements of communication is visual, voice, and verbal. So now let's get into a little bit more because when we talk about um, you know, the, the elements of, of communication, we, there are also dimensions. Sometimes when I, when I do my workshop in person, I, I, I give people a cute quiz. It's called the Dimensions of Gale. <laughs> well, right now we're going to talk about the different dimensions of communication. And, and, and in your dimensions, there are so many things that we see about you that's very uh, observable. So the first dimensions I want to talk about of communication is directness and versus indirectness. So directness, this means the tendency like, you know, to, to move outwardly you know, to forward or act outwardly by expressing your thoughts or your feelings you know, and you know, your actions and, and how you influence others. You know, that, so that's one dimension, people who are direct. And then the second dimension, people who are indirect. You know, so it's, it's often subtle, it's less demonstrative, and it's more reserved way of inf influencing others. So we've got the person who is direct and a person who is indirect. And so I want you to, to sit and think about yourself. Like, you know, as you ask yourself, like, what style of behavior do you think that you have, direct or indirect? And remember, there's no, like, one right way. There's no best way to be. It's your personality. It's, it's like, how is it that you communicate? Now, let's talk about, kind of break it down. Remember our three V's, verbal, vocal, and visual. What I want to talk about, first of all, let's say, look at a direct person. Verbally, for example, a direct person tells, instead of saying, you know, tells you to have a seat or tells you to sit down, uh, a, a direct person verbally talks more and expresses opinions very readily. But now an indirect person, when you look at the verbal scheme, asks, would you like to sit down? An indirect person maybe listens a little bit more and reserves opinions and has a low level of verbal communication. In other words, it's not always out there in front. But now let's look at the second, but look at the vocal part of, of the of V. Uh, a direct person has more variety in their voice. 
Uh, a direct person is more forceful. They have higher volume and they have faster speech patterns. But an indirect person, when we look at that vocal, that V, is, is steady and has even delivery and it's less forceful and, and their delivery has a lower volume, maybe not speaking quite as loudly, and has slower speech patterns. Um, now, the, and the third, the visual, let's look at the visual. For a direct person, visually you would see them having a firm handshake and steady eye contact and gestures to emphasize the different points that they're trying to make. And oftentimes a direct person will display impatience. Now, uh, an, in, uh, an indirect person has a more gentle handshake, for example, and might have intermittent eye contact. And, and um, a more indirect person might limit the, the gestures that they use to emphasize points and, and an indirect person um, might you know, exhibit more patience. So the first question I want to ask you guys is like, what style um, do you think your behavior represents? And if, if you, if it can, I don't know if you can unmute folks. I'd like to hear someone just kind of shout out uh, um, you know, what style do you think that you represent? Feel free to unmute yourselves. You I'm indirect. Okay, you're, you're indirect. Ah, very good. Who, who else? I would say that I'm sometimes both. You know, sometimes. Very good. Do they have it? Very good. Thanks, Eric. Uh, and that's very, that's very important because, you know, you're not always just one thing. And um, let's see, what, Chris, what about you? I'm both. Okay, very good. Very good. So we recognize, now here's the one cool question I always like to ask. What are the indicators that support that premise? You know, uh, so, uh, my, uh, so Michael, did you say that you're direct? Or, I'm sorry, you said you're indirect. And so why do you, give us some indicators of why you feel, oh, I'm direct. I'm a natural introvert, um, so okay. I'm reserved. There are times when I am direct, but it's a conscious effort. I have to force okay. myself to adapt to that style. But Very my good. natural tendency is to be indirect and to listen. Very good. And for those who said, I'm both, do you feel that you are both during an average conversation with a colleague or when you're communicating very specifically to something with a, a, a staff person or even a family member? Do you feel that in your normal communication that you exhibit both direct and indirect? Well, here, I, I think I can kind of base it on where when it comes to personal development, there are some areas that I personally have worked on. And what I'm finding yeah. out is that when I began to apply the principles of understanding and listening, yes, you tend to move in a direction in which there's going to be a lot less resistance. And so ah. it's sort of adapting, correct? I mean, Very good. And so that's just been a part of my experience. But, and I also kind of base it on working in the retail world for several years and interacting with different people because they all brought different styles. And of course, yeah. there's also a teaching with, you know, when it comes to some companies just had a, a knack for training in those areas and they were very fruitful for me. Very good. And that, that's very good. And so it is very important. So that, now these are the first two dimensions, the direct and indirect. And thank you all for identifying and recognizing yeah, that we can mix it up. And, and very often, though, you will find that you are utilizing one specific um, dimension when you communicate. Now, let's take a look at uh, two other dimensions, supporting versus controlling. So now when we, when we talk about you know, supporting, supporting, as you see, you, know, you tend to be motivated by a uh, supporting person is very motivated by relationships and they want to get to know people and, they, and you, know, you base decisions very much on feelings and experiences. Whereas uh, you know, a controlling person, again, we're talking about dimensions that explain the motivation behind how, you know, the, uh, the, what we observe when someone is communicating. So a controlling person is usually more motivated at, at, by tasks, take, getting things done, you know, pushing for facts and making sure that the details and the issues and, and we keep emotions out of things. And so, so for example, with a person, 
remember we're talking about visual, vocal, and, and voice. What, what we're, we're looking at the a person and the actions that we observe. So for example, under the visual, vocal, and verbal, a, a, a visual, visually, we'll see a person uh, supportive, that they're animated, they have more facial expressions and many more hand gestures and, and you know, body movement, and they're more contact oriented and, and dramatic in their actions. That's the visual part. But for example, a controlling person in that visual format might have fewer facial expressions and or their controlled limited hand gestures, you know, or expressions of non-contact oriented. That's a more controlled person demonstrating visual. Uh, when we go to the vocal part, a supportive person, you see lots of voice inflection and more pitch and variation, and there's more variety in the uh, vocal quality of a person who's more supporting. And when it comes to vocal, a person who demonstrates more um, controlling uh, actions, they have little inflection and maybe few pitch variations, less variety in vocal qualities and a little bit more control. Now that the third V, remember our three V's, visual, vocal, and verbal, um, our, our supportive person verbally is the person who tells stories and anecdotes and they, and they share personal feelings and there's more informal speech and, and they express their opinions readily. And a controlling uh, person, what you might observe in their actions, when we talk about the verbal style of communication, um, a, a controlling person is very fact and, and task oriented, you know, limited sharing of personal feelings, and more formal in speech. Now, when we look at these two dimensions, supporting or controlling, all right, which style do you feel, you know, it re represents your behavior a little bit better? Controlling or supporting? Anyone? This is Michael. I'm controlling. Okay, very good. Okay. And, and, and what are the indicators that you see? Because you said that very easily. What are the indicators that support that for you? I, I knew it right away. I mean, I, I love dealing with facts and tasks. I'm an IT professional, so I'm used to that task oriented uh -huh. job. Uh -huh. So I know for me, I have to study storytelling and I have to, I have to study being able to share my feelings. Because that's okay. not my natural tendency. Oh, very good. Very good. Very good. Anyone else like to share, okay, here's what, what your style is and, and what observable act, actions that, that you recognize or others might recognize? I'm supportive. Okay. Okay. Very good. And so, uh, so what are the indicators that, that support that premise for you? Well, I, I'm looking at a few of these factors when it comes to, um, hmm, uh, well, when it comes to f facial animation, I'm probably yeah. not there with all of that, but dramatic in my actions, I okay. do believe that that, that really, uh, that really stands out. Okay. And, um, you're very dramatic. What are you talking about? Look at you now. <laughs> well, when I when I say that, see, and that's another key factor is that I never really am conscious of what other people see. So therefore, uh -huh. Eric, you, could, you, you know what I'm saying? And so then, but that's a natural part of me because if that's what he sees all the time, it sort of qualifies that you know that part of the uh, of the uh, of the of the picture here, <laughs> I, and I appreciate that. And that so is you tell us stories about the. Air Force in Alaska or in Alaska, <laughs> South Dakota or whatever. Yeah, you do that all the time. Yeah. And, and it's very important. That's very yeah. important what, what, what uh, Prince was saying. He said, I'm not aware of what other people are seeing. And so this is a very key message, everybody. Write this down. Recognize and make yourself, thank you, Derek, and make yourself very aware what image what is it that I am presenting? We're talking about effective communication. And so you're recognizing, hopefully so far, that communicating is more than just writing things down and it's more than just speaking. It's all of you. What are you presenting? And so therefore, when we want to be effective in our communication, we have to be aware, how am I presenting myself to others? They, and that, so that's excellent. And so 
Here's a question, everyone. What type of, so we're, ta this is, we're talking about our, our business relationships, working with colleagues, working with clients, you know, uh, as, as our customers. Um, what type of work behaviors might you expect from a person who is direct? Speaking of, I'm not aware of what people, you know, are seeing. So what, what kind of behaviors is it that you might expect from a person that you're working with or that a client but that that you would say, ah, this person, they are very direct in their uh, dimension of communication. Throw out a couple behaviors. Hmm. Eddie, are you still with us? I think they're going to be kind of short with you, more direct and to the point. They're not going to give you a lot of details without you asking. Okay. Okay. Very good. I would say maybe uncaring, maybe perceived as uncaring. Ah, very good. Very, very good. Now let's jump. So what are some of the behaviors at work that you might expect from an indirect person, someone who has that dimension? Maybe some of that passive aggression or... Oh, yes. You know, um, or they talk around something without actually landing on the point. Very good. Very good. And so you see that what you can recognize some characteristics, some ob uh, observable actions in people. And so recognize also that people are looking at you. And as sometimes we might say reading you because that's what we do. So now let's talk about those, the, the next dimension, the, you know, what behaviors might we see in a person who exhibits this, the dimension of being supportive. What are those behaviors that we might see? Well, they, they might be viewed as more patient and yes. more caring. Yes, yes, very good. But also this is the person who may show up at your desk and just right off, wanna start telling you all about their weekend. And get yes. into a long story before they even get to the real reason why they were there. Yes, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's okay. Now, on, uh, on the opposite, what might we see? What, what might we observe? The kind of actions from a controlling person. That short hello. That hey, you know, as they enter the building. That um, yeah. Okay. I'm preparing. You know, or you know that I don't kind of like that push off -y kind of, you know, leave me alone, I'm, do I'm focused, I'm busy. Exactly. Yeah, they're moving on task. Yeah, that, that's right. right, exactly, on task. Very good, very good. Now remember, I shared earlier, we're not saying that one is better than the other. We are identifying that just learn how to recognize those behaviors. And so now I, I'm putting up kind of a, a, what I call a communications model, because we've got a, a, the, the four kinds of people that we're looking at when we talk about how we communicate. We've got a person who's a socializer. We've got a person in a communications model who's a thinker. We've got a relator and we've got a director. So what are we seeing from a, a socializer? So you, you see the high relationship, you know, they're, they're high in relationships and they're very direct. So a socializer, they're very spontaneous in their actions and the decisions and, and a, a socializer likes involvement. They dislike being alone. They exaggerate, <laughs> generalize. They tend to dream and they get others caught up in their own dreams. <laughs> and they jump from one activity to another. They work quickly and excitedly with others. And they seek esteem and acknowledgement. And they have good, uh, great pers persuasive skills. Now, think of someone who is a socializer. And, you know, and so you don't have to you know, say it out loud, but just kind of think of that kind of person. And so now let's talk next about the thinker in my communications model here. The thinker is a person who, who is high in the area of control and also that they are indirect. So a thinker is, is very cautious in their actions and their, and their decisions. A thinker likes organ, organization and they like structure. They dislike involvement. They ask many questions about specific details and they prefer 
many questions about uh, the specific details. Um, they want to be right and so that they can be overly reliant on data collection. Um, a thinker works slowly and they also are very precise and, and they prefer to be alone. And a thinker is excellent when it comes to problem solving skills. That, that's a, a thinker. Now let's jump up to a relator. A relator is that person who is high in the area of relationship and also they're indirect. So that relator, they are you know, slow at taking action and making decisions. A relator likes close personal relationships and this likes interpersonal conflict. Can you think of someone you know, that you write in now in your head that, that oh, okay, that person, that, that describes that person very well? A relator supports and, and actively listens to others, leans in. Uh, a relator is, is weak at goal setting and self-direction and has ex excellent ability to gain support from others. A relator works slowly and cohesively with others and seeks security and a sense of belonging and has good counseling skills. And then the, the last one, let's talk about the, the director. The director is high in control and very direct. So that director is decisive with their actions and decisions. That person that I'm defining as a director likes control and dislikes inaction, prefers maximum freedom to manage self and others. Uh, a director is very cool and independent and competitive, has a low tolerance for feelings and attitudes and advice of others, and works quickly and impressively alone. But also a director has good administrative skills. So on, on my communications model, the relator and the socializer that you see here on top, they are all about relationships. And on the bottom, the thinker and the director, they are uh, task oriented, they're more controlling. And, and these are the, just kind of like the, the behaviors that you will see very often in individuals that you're working with, who are in your family, who are your clients, your customers. And so uh, just think for a moment, everybody do the Arsenio Hall, go, hmm. <laughs> as you think about some, some clients that you may have or prospective clients that you may have been trying to romance, what style of communication might they be, ha have and begin to think of how you might need to make some adaptations so that you can communicate with that, with that person. Does that, does that kind of make sense when I ask you to think about and, and picture a person in your mind? It could be even a spouse, maybe not even a coworker, not even a client, but think about some of the uh, observable actions that people make to identify, are they a relator? Are they a socializer? Are they a thinker? Or are they a director? Okay, and so now, when we spoke earlier, I, I just mentioned this very briefly about how we communicate with folks. And when you communicate with people, and just in the very beginning, you know, I, I thought I was communicating very well, and, and my French, I, I, I actually was speaking pretty well, but you all did not quite understand what I was saying, so I had to adapt my style. And by adapting my style, what I did was I switched from French to English, and, and therefore you understood better, correct? because I had to change to make sure that I was communicating effectively. So therefore, adapting your style requires three things. First of all, you have to have knowledge on how to adapt. And so therefore, I just switched from English to French. Okay, I had knowledge how to adapt so that you could understand me. And then you have to have the willingness to adapt. I'm sure you can agree with me that there are times when some people, you can tell they just don't want, they're, they're going to say what they're going to say. They really just want to stay themselves and they're really not interested in communicating well with me. And so they have, you have to be willing to, to make a change. And then also you have to have the proper motivation for adapting. And so, for example, when we look at the different styles, you know, if you need to know how to communicate more effectively, let's say with a socializer, 
you know, socializers, you know, you, you want to support their opinions and ideas. You want to, you know, allow discussion to flow and occasionally go off on tangents. <laughs> that's what, because that's what a socializer can relate to. You can be entertaining. You can avoid conflict and, and uh, arguments with a socializer. You can make notes on uh, specifics of agreements and allow them to get things off their chest first. Now, but if you are a socializer, then you need to lower your need for approval from others. You need to develop and demonstrate more directive skills and actions, such as self-assertion or conflict resolution and negotiations. Is, is that, does that kind of resonate with folks? When we talk about how to, how to adapt, and so now I'm going to jump on to a director. So if you need to know how to communicate more effectively with a director, then you need to support their goals and objectives. You need to talk about desired results and outcomes with a person who demonstrates uh, actions of a director. You need to keep communication very businesslike with a person who's a director. You need to recognize ideas rather than, um, you know, rather than everything, making everything personal. Um, you need to be precise and efficient and well organized with the director. You need to provide them with clearly described options with supporting analysis when you're talking with the director, when you're communicating. You need to agree, argue, when you argue on facts, argue on facts and not feelings when disagreements occur. Don't talk about how you feel with the director, just place the facts. Now, if you are a director, then you need to lower your need to control other people and their conditions. When we remember, we're talking about how to, effect, to uh, act, communicate effectively. And so if you are a director, then you need to develop and demonstrate skills and actions such as listening, questioning, and, and more positive reinforcement. Is it, again, is this resonating? I always have to ask, is, is this helping someone right now? I see Prince is taking some notes there. But now, let's jump to the thinker. Let's jump to the thinker. So if you need to know how to communicate more effectively with thinkers, then be thorough and well-prepared. Support their organized and thoughtful approach to things. Be supportive of them and support their need to be logical and accurate. Demonstrate through actions rather than words with a thinker. And ask questions of a thinker. A thinker likes questions. Allow time for deliberation and analysis with a thinker. Um, list advantages versus disadvantages in, in all of your plans. And provide solid, tangible, factual evidence when you're dealing with that person who is a thinker. And, 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 I, and I like, I guess I, I'm very much, I have very much the qualities of a thinker because these are the things that kind of resonate with me. But so if you are a thinker, then you need to lower your need to be perfect and stop focusing on other people's weaknesses if you are more of a thinker. And you need to de develop and demonstrate skills and actions such as you know, empathetic listening, if you're a thinker, positive reinforcement of others, and you need to involve others with complementary strengths. And for some people, like, that's easy, you know, to compliment others. For other people, I don't even think about that. So now let's, let's finally, let's go down to the relator. So if you want to communicate more effectively with those who demonstrate actions of being a relator, then be warm and sincere. You know, show personal interests and support their feelings and assume it will be taken personally. <laughs> so allow you know, a relator time to, to develop trust for you and actively listen to a relator. Discuss personal feelings, you know, and, and, and avoid, you know, uh, the disagreements so much and discuss and support relationships with a relator and complement teamwork and how they work well with others. But now, finally, if you are a relator, then try to seek out new and, and different kinds of experiences. And then also develop and demonstrate more directive skills and, and watch you know, how we're, we're being directive and make sure that your actions are, are, are not a diversion to what's going on.
So these are words. So I'm talking about how you adapt your style so that you can work well with others. And so now, are you guys ready for your homework assignment? Okay, ready for a test? <laughs> because I've got a personal assessment for you. So here's what I'd like you to do. I want you to, you know, to ask yourself, how do you feel about the style that you have identified for yourself? And, and I thank you because we had a few folks who identified your style. And, and so just, you know, this thing, you don't have to say out loud, but just think, how do you feel about that style? And, and recognize, remember, there's no right and there's no wrong. There's no good or there's bad. It's just your personality. This is your style. But here's the thing that's very important. How effective is your style when you are communicating with these following people? Now, on your, um, on your sheets, on your notepad, go ahead and write this down. I would, really would like for you to do this. You know, where it's, you know, I want you to actually, on your sheet of paper, write down how effective am, is my style when I'm communicating. And you see my effectiveness scale here? I have uh, uh, one is being very low. And all the way up to six means I have a high level of effect. I'm being very effective in a high level, number six. So look at your, your boss, your supervisor, uh, your the, the CEO, the executive, if that's not you. So rate yourself right now, one to six, how well you communicate and how effectively you communicate with your boss. Then the next one, your peers at work or your colleagues. Rate yourself one to six on how well you are communicating with your colleagues. And now the next one, rate yourself on how well you are communicating with your employees, those who are working for you, your partners. Now, your family. Just general members in your family, if you have children, you know, your brothers and sisters, your parents. How effectively are you communicating? Rate yourself out on that scale of one to six. Are we all doing that? Okay. Now, your spouse, if you're married, or your, or your partner, significant other, how effectively are you communicating with them? Rating it from one to six. And then your friends, the last one, your friends. How well are you, uh, or effectively are you communicating with your friends? Very good. Are there, when you, now, when you look at this effectiveness scale, are there any aha moments that anyone's having so far when you rate yourself with these different categories of individuals? That, can anyone share with me any aha moments when you see the scale of how you've rated yourself? I'll share mine. Okay. So mine are pretty, pretty much the same across the board for all the different levels. But I noticed that my lowest one was my peers at work. Okay. And I think it's because, like with all the other people, I'm more intentional about understanding their communication style and adapting my communication style when needed. Okay. Whereas peers is more, a little bit more relaxed. Uh-huh. Okay. Very good. Very good. Very good. And so now I think you'll, uh, everyone, you will appreciate my, my next uh, question and part of the personal assessment. So when you, you recognize how you, you are being effective with these different categories of individuals, so now my next question, and again, I, I do want you to kind of write this down because this is part of your homework. Uh, what strategies can you use that will help adapt your style to be a more effective communicator with these different groups of folks. And, and this is what I, I really want you to write this down. So when you talk about your supervisor, your boss, first of all, you see my first column. What is your boss's style? Are they direct? Are they indirect? Are they, a support of the, are they supporting or are they a controller? Kind of write down what style your boss is. Now, next to that, just jot down maybe one thing real quick of something that you feel that you can do 
as you look at how did you relate yourself, let's say you rated yourself, let's say I rated myself on a, a, a two. So, and the, or let's say even if you rated yourself a six, what can you do to adapt to be more effective? Because no matter how we relate, we rate ourselves, we can always improve. Now, next, let's jump, jump right on down to your peers, your colleagues at, at, at work. First of all, uh, this, this, uh, this is part of your homework so that you can, at your homework will be write down some of the names of the colleagues and your peers at, that you're working with and then identify their style and then identify for each colleague the things that you can do to adapt. But for right now, for this exercise, let's just write down one, per, think of one person, write down what is their style and then for one person, just jot down one quick thing that you feel that you could do to effectively communicate with them, to improve your communication with them. Now, now then let's, next, let's jump down to your employees, the, those who are working for you, working under you. you know, again, for, for this exercise, just think of like maybe one person, identify what their uh, style is predominantly, and then, Jot down one thing that you could do to more effectively communicate with them. Now pick a person in your family. Again, same thing. What is their style? And one thing that you can do to communicate a little more effectively. And then your spouse or your significant other. What is their style? And then one thing that you can do to uh, communicate more effectively, something that, that will cause you to adapt to them. How, how does this exercise feel? How are you feeling about this exercise? Was it kind of, was it making you recognize it? Okay, I'm gonna pick on somebody. <laughs> I'll I'll speak up. This is Michael. Okay. Um, I think it's a really good exercise because it gets you thinking, especially when you you start putting names in the boxes. It helps you to visualize the person. Yes. Yes. So I know I've got a um a peer that I work with. It's not like a project manager that I work with, and she's more of the. I can't remember what you call it here, but she's more of the, um, I guess the, more of the supportive side. Okay. Has a need to tell stories. So I know that if I have a 30 minute meeting set with her, I know that the first 10 minutes, she needs to tell me about her day, her weekend. She needs to get it off her chest before we can get to the details. Very good. I'm a thanker, so I need the details, but, I, but I've learned to just slow down and listen, ask her how her day is, even if I'm not truly interested, I still have to take the time and ask her before we can really get to what I'm trying to accomplish. And that's, and that's very important because you, you recognize her need, her style, you have adapted so that you can communicate with her effectively. And what, is the res what do you feel is the result of that? How does that make her feel? I think it's been a great relationship. I mean, it's for, yes. for, for years that we've worked together. I mean, it's, it's worked out really well. Very good. And so I, I know this may be a, a duh a question for everyone, but think of a time of when you don't adapt yourself to what your colleague, to what your client, to what your employee needs and their style of communication. Think, recognize how you are causing them to feel, what kind of work environment are you presenting them with, but also are you helping them improve themselves in what it is that they are delivering, the service that they are delivering, the work projects that they're delivering, because they're feeling like I'm listening to, I'm being supported, you know, and someone gets me. And that's what people like to feel, someone gets me. And, this, and that's quite, quite excellent. And so and this screen that I, this is what I would like to share that, you know, understanding how to blame the effects of what we say 
and how we say things can have the greatest impact on your effectiveness in your personal and, and your professional life. And, and that is so important. And so one, I have a one last piece I wanted to share with you. I'm trying to be very cognizant of the time. But when we talk about adapting ourselves, there's a form that we call one-dimensional adaptation. And so if you, and I'd like you to take some notes on this. If you need to increase your directness, then here are some notes. Speak at a faster pace, initiate conversations and, and decisions, give recommendations without asking for a whole lot of opinions. Again, this is if you need to increase your ability to be more direct. You know, use direct statements. Communicate with strong, confident in your voice. And then use face, you know, conflict you know, openly. You know, make sure that you're not always trying to avoid conflict. And increase eye contact. That's very important. But now, if you're a person who needs to increase your, in, uh, being, uh, your ability to be indirect, in other words, to pull back from being so direct, talk and make decisions more slowly. Seek and acknowledge the opinions of others. And share your decision making and leadership instead of being in control and doing everything. Um, do not interrupt others. Refrain from criticizing and challenging or acting pushy. Also, choose your words very carefully when you're to help increase your ability to be more uh, display more of an indirect communication style. And then have less direct eye, 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 eye contact. I have had some in, people tell me that I actually have made them uncomfortable because I, they say I, it looks like I'm peering into their souls because I'm looking at them so directly. And so sometimes I learn how to just kind of tone it down a little bit so, I, so that I do not cause someone to be uncomfortable. Now, if you are a person who needs to increase being supportive, share your feelings, you know, and let other, you, you let your emotions show a little bit. Respond to the expressions that other people are, are having. Um, take time to develop personal relationships with you, with your clients or your, your colleagues. Use friendly language instead of being quite so direct. Uh, communicate more more freely and loosen up and, and, and stand you know if it's if you're a person who likes to make sure they keep their distance and right now of course we have to do that but but uh, uh, people who are don't look like they're always trying to stay away because that's their nature try to relax a little bit more and go with the flow you know to be more supportive be willing to digress from an, an agenda uh, unless there's something serious going on and then finally for that person who needs to increase your ability to be a little bit more controlling, get right to the task at hand in, instead of always being a procrastinator. Maintain more logical and factual orientation to things and keep to an agenda instead of going you know, down the rabbit holes and leave when the work is done. You know, don't waste time. And, and play down your enthusiasm and body, body movements and use business-like language when you're, you're trying to increase your ability to be a bit more controlling. And don't initiate physical contact if you, know, if you are a person who's trying to increase your ability to be more controlled. But, and again, I'm trying to be very cognizant of time, Jordan. So what I wanted to find, ask, do anybody have any questions? Feel free to unmute yourself if you have any questions. Yeah. Yes, Prince Johnson here. I have one question. Um, what would be uh, one to maybe two different good books that you would recommend? Oh, uh, one of the, the greatest books, and oh shoot, I, I don't have the name, but Fierce Conversations. This is a very good book that deals with communicating effectively. Fierce conversations and, and Prince, what I'll have to do is I'll have to uh, uh, send, uh, email you so okay. I can uh, give you the name of the, uh, the author. Because okay. that, that is uh, something that is quite, quite excellent. Mm -hmm. and, and, and in this book, uh, the writer, she talks about the different uh, kinds of people that you're going to be interacting with on a daily basis. 
-hmm. and how to communicate with them and, and, and fiercely, you know, meaning sometimes we avoid having those conversations, mm -hmm. sometimes we avoid having that kind of, of discussion. And mm -hmm. so again, assessing the personality type and being able to have that kind of com uh, conversation so that the information can be better received and not being afraid. Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank I you look for forward that. to receiving that. Okay, this is great. You. Very good. Very good. And and then also before we, we head out, um, I would like each person just to share what is one takeaway that you've, you've gotten from the presentation today? Just one thing that, that you feel that you're taking away from this presentation. And, and I'd like each person to just kind of, just like popcorn, just, just share, you know, okay, here, here's one thing I'm taking away from this. Hi, this is Julian. Hi. Hi. Um, I, I consider myself a good communicator, but I think that the important is to always remember that work has to be put into it. I think you reminded me again of, it's not if I think I'm a good communicator, it's success, you know, um, kind of assessing who I'm talking to and how to make it good for them. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Hi, this is Michael. I'll give my takeaway real quick. Um, so, so my biggest takeaway probably is, um, is I need to uh, pay more attention to the impact, the potential impact that my words may have on the people I'm communicating with. Oh, very good. Very good. Someone else. Uh, this yeah, is Dr. Wallace. Hi. Hi. Um, my one takeaway from is um, when you uh, told us to, to do the numbers and how we effectively communicate with different ones in our sphere. Right, um, the reading. It was an uh -huh. eye for me. Good. Good. Next. Yeah, French Johnson here. I. I guess what really st uh, stood out to me was actually in preparation of uh, being thorough as well as focusing on the needs of others. Very good. Very good. And anyone else for one last question before I turn it back over to Jordan? Oh, well, very good. And so uh, my whole purpose today was to be able to help share with everyone, number one, how to assess your style of communication, to recognize you do have a style and that you are actually demonstrating behaviors that, that other people can observe and that we want to take a look at what it is that we do in ourselves and recognize what others are doing and how we can adapt ourselves so that we can change. And um, yeah, so that's, uh, thank you everyone. I really appreciate the opportunity to have been able to, to be with you today. And, uh, and, and, um, and if you have any questions, um, certainly, you know, email me, um, you can get my website, but uh, you can go on my website with the African American Chamber of Commerce and Brock uh, Consulting is www.brockconsulting.biz. And uh, let me know if you have any other questions. And I just thank you for the gift of your time. And so I'll turn it right back over to you, Jordan. Thank you so much. This was truly a phenomenal program today, as it always is with you, Gail. I thank you so much for your time today. This Excellent. was truly great. I, I think that um, I'm always complimented on my communication style and it's because it's so upbeat. Um, I have a tendency to utilize my hands and I have a lot of excitement behind um, the things that I present. Uh, so um, seeing and hearing a lot of this today has helped me hone in on some of those things that um, maybe when I have a different strategy in play that I can then, you know, utilize some of those key things to be more aware of how effectively my point is getting across. So I thank you for that. Um, I, I also learned a lot about, um, you know, these programs are truly awesome. And I tell everyone each and every day that um, it is truly a pleasure to work at the African American Chamber. And I think um, a lot of that is the fact that my leader, my boss, Eric H. Kearney, and I'm not just saying this because he's here, and if you know me, I say this all the time, is that he allows me the opportunity to voice my ideas. Uh, he gives me the support to create and bring those things to fruition, um, but also allows me to kind of work my creative magic. 
Um, and like you said, a good director questions, is supportive um, and leads. And I truly, truly, truly have learned a lot in my time here at the African American Chamber just because of that great leadership. So um, I really, really appreciate that. And I appreciate the ability to create in that, in that open space because it allows us to do a lot of things that you know may not have come necessarily from the desk of Eric Kearney. Every time that I've presented an idea about tech, he's always up in, in arms on it to research it, figure out if it'll work best and then implement it. And I think that that is something that is super strong, especially during these times. You know, um, a lot of us are rushing to get back out of the house. Um, you know, um, a lot of things are changing. Um, the new norm is now uh, the norm, right? Uh, so I want everyone to know that the African American Chamber is still in motion and still in movement. We're open Monday through Friday from nine to five. We're doing our best to get back into our physical location. Um, I know a couple of you have had questions about that. We are working on that piece. So please, please bear with us. We are working on getting our staff back in the office and then we will work on getting the public back in too. One thing that I can most definitely promise you is that these virtual experiences will still be happening whether we're back in the office or working remote. Um, we have truly seen a phenomenal turnout um, in regards to virtual programming. Um, and uh, today we actually did a small audit between my director of transformative initiatives and sponsorships. Um, we have done 86 programs to date. That includes our virtual programming as well as our radio shows. Um, I think that says a lot of, of uh, about how we are still, still moving forward during these new times. It is pushing us to greater things. And as you guys all know, our hashtag is great things are happening. Um, and we truly stand by that. Um, we are doing our best to make sure that these virtual programs are happening, but we're also not just limiting ourselves to what we did in the physical space. So um, I know we have some Instagram live um, conversations happening. Of course, we still have our resource network that is taking place. You can always check out our information at african-americanchamber.com. My email is in the chat section right now um, if you want to check that out. I have personally e um, messaged each and every one of you our survey as well for today. So if you would take a second, it is a Google form. Um, I know a lot of you are used to our Wiser forms. Unfortunately, we do believe Wiser um, is no longer in business at this time mm. due to COVID-19. So unfortunately, we are now on Google forms. So please don't be afraid to drop us some information um, and some feedback about what's going on, how you're feeling about our programming and today's program especially. Um, we are super excited for feedback. And one thing I love about Gail Brock is that she's always welcoming feedback um, and is always on me to make sure that I mention that too, because she loves that. And uh, I see Eric's in the comments asking about the homework piece. And yes, Eric, you have homework, okay? And you know, <laughs> you know she will pull up for that homework, okay? So uh, please make sure that you connect with Gail, okay? Um, we, are, we are always, always thankful to have you, Gail. We appreciate your time, the wonderful things that brought Thank you. Thank you very much. And your consistent and constant support of the African American Chamber. I'd be remiss if I did not shout out our president and CEO who is on the line as well, Eric H. Herney, doing phenomenal things at the helm. We have some great things that are coming up. So please, if you're not following us on social media, please follow us on social media. Um, we understand that our emails sometimes can be hairy. So please bear with us during these times. Um, if you would like to connect, please shoot me an email. And we can make sure that that happens. This program will be posted to our website as well as to our YouTube channel. For some reason, you go to our website and you don't see these videos that you're looking for, um, please make sure you check out our YouTube channel at African American Chamber. Okay, you'll see a lot of videos of programs as well as our president CEO, Eric Kearney, talking about a lot of phenomenal things. Um, Prince Johnson, uh, who is one of our veteran business enterprise certifications, he is our, our first VBE certified individual as well. We appreciate you being here. I uh, see we've got Stephen Easley on the line as well, who just joined us. Stephen, thank you for being here. Julian Warren, my girl from Girl Scouts of West Southwestern Ohio in the building. We appreciate all the support. Eddie, uh, this is my first time meeting you. Appreciate you being here, Michael Pope, as well. We appreciate you guys. Africa, it's great to see you again. Uh, thank you guys in the Greater Cincinnati Real association for doing the wonderful things that you're doing and if you did not hear in the beginning let me say this at the end and then we will wrap up our virtual city hall day is live on our website okay if you go under the communications tab and you look under video broadcast you will see a beautiful nice image of our president excuse me of our board chairman president of our board jason dunn 
he led off our day um, and truly, truly, truly is a phenomenal, phenomenal five and a half hours of information. Feel free to skim through it, okay? So that way you can hear the individuals that you want. We have a lot of our city council individuals. We have um, um, a lot of uh, the city administration. Um, and when I say that these conversations were raw and uncut on 513 day, Prince Johnson can attest, we were asking the questions that we wanted answers to. And I invite you to, to uh, check out the responses, okay? Um, it was a truly, truly phenomenal day. We are working out how we can make State House Day happen in that same fashion. Uh, Prince Johnson can attest to how great it was in the physical sense. We had 123 people in attendance for Virtual City Hall Day. We would have awesome. that many people at State House yep. Day or City Hall Day in person. So we are hoping, of course, by the time we get to State House Day, we can do in person and virtual, and we're already working on those things. Please stay positive during these times, guys. Okay, a lot is happening. We all all have stuff happening, right? We are we we know people that we're losing. I want everyone to have a positive spirit as things are reopening. Don't rush yourself. That's Don't right. rush it. That's okay. Right. Continue to wash those hands, wear those masks, okay? We really appreciate your support of the African American Chamber. Mm -hmm. And I want you to know that we're here, we're thriving, and we're here to help you, okay? And true resources for you. Um, we have some big news dropping soon, okay? We also have some information that will be coming out about um, some, some funding for small minority-owned businesses, okay, um, from a um, local space as well. So please stay tuned for that. If you would like to connect with our Minority Business Assistance Center, Deborah Davis is in still full motion. If you are looking to be featured on our radio shows, please reach out to us, okay? We've got a lot, a lot of things happening. We want to make sure that you have an opportunity to get your voice heard, okay? And I tell people all the time, uh, actions speak louder than words. If you look at our city hall flyer, it says, let your voice be heard. When I say we're moving intentionally, I truly mean it. I thank you guys for your time today. And I hope to connect with you soon. Have a great day. <laughs> Jordan, before everyone goes, uh, well, uh, more so for Prince, if you see in the chat, I put my email address. Can, uh, Prince, can you email me? And then I can respond directly and get you the, uh, the name of the author for the Fierce com uh, Conversations. Sure. Glad okay. To all right, All right, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you, Joe. Have a good day. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye now.